No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm bringing you a much anticipated interview with uh, one of the crown jewels coming out of Texas right now. That Mexican OT is in the building. Damn. How you feeling, man? Feeling good. Appreciate the intro. I just also want to say that in my head, it is really hard to remember to say that Mexican OT. To me, in my head, it seems like it should be OT the Mexican. Nah. So it's like I keep reversing it, so I apologize if I do that again. Nah, you good, gangster. That's funny, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's okay. a pleasure being here, bro. I remember uh, watching your shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hell yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, without a doubt. My boys, too. My boys were fucking shitting bricks when they found it out. Okay, and what, what's your name? CJ. CJ, okay. Yeah. And how are you guys friends? Me and my kinfolk. Okay. Nice. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. For real. Uh, I actually got turned on your music from Johnny Shipes. He put me in touch. Yeah, that's and, my dog. And basically just told me to check it out. And I checked it out, and I was like, damn, this dude's doing a lot of fucking views. Hell yeah. And you, you definitely got a whole movement going on right now, huh? Yeah, I bust my bitch ass off. <laughs> it seems like it. Yeah. So, um, all right, tell me about where exactly you're from and everything. I'm from Bay City, Texas. Right. And that's where? Matagorda County. What's yeah. it near? Mm, like next to Houston, south of Houston. Okay. Yeah. And it's right on the border of Mexico? Nah, not really. We're in the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, what's it like out there? Shit, the country. Not, they're just small towns. Right. It's kind of like quiet, sleepy type area? Yeah, nothing like this. Shit, this <laughs> nothing like LA. This but, is but we definitely too? got like a mall. and You got a mall? Lake Jackson got a mall. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like it, that's about like... From basically Lake Jackson by like what forty minutes. Okay, and so what was your childhood like? Shit, it was cool, you know. I mean, you know, it was rough. Like, you know, had a lot of family issues, you know, bumping heads, being a hothead, always getting into fights and shit. But it was nothing crazy, you know what I'm saying? I, I did a lot of dumb shit. Really? Yeah, well, but you what know, did your parents do? My mother's dead. Oh, I'm, I'm, my mother passed. From my, what age? I'm my mother passed when I was a. Uh, I was eight, and my father, shit, my father was in prison when I was like four times, like 10. Wow. He got out. I was living with him for a while, and shit was fun. And uh, shit, then, you know what I'm saying? I, me, and he, me and him just kind of separated, and uh, I, I started living with my stepmama. Uh -huh. And, man, you know what I'm saying? She was a good mother to me, man. What happened uh, with your mom when you were eight? She passed from a car wreck. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, hell yeah. That's terrible. Yeah, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, I, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't imagine losing her now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad it's over with. Yeah, definitely. You know, it sucks that it happened, but. So when you start living with your dad, though, like, is he on some, some wild shit? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fresh out of prison? <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Right. That motherfucker was, I was in seventh grade, that nigga, it, bro, he would have a house full of women. I remember there'd be women sitting on the stairs. You know what I'm saying? He was and, just that And dude. you're like 12? You have, or you're, you're in seventh grade. And I remember he'd wake me up and he'd be like, son, it's five, four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what? He like, you ready to whoop ass? I'm like, oh, I got to get ready for school, all this shit. And he was like, fuck school, you ready to whoop ass? And fucking, I go down there and he'd have like three or four dudes there and they there because they think they could rap and he wanted me to eat these niggas up. So <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. What the hell was your dad doing up at five in the morning hanging out with a bunch of dudes who think Living. they can rap? Just doing some nah, wild shit? I mean, no, shit. no, 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 no. He, they were, he, he was with the women. Right. Them niggas was there just because they thought they could rap and he just, that's his, that was his entertainment. You know, he's my number one fan. He know I'm going to eat anybody up. Right. But okay, you, your dad, like, because Boosie got a lot of shit for basically saying that he had a stripper, I think, give his 14 year old son a blowjob. Is that out of pocket or is that nah. normal? I, don't, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like on social media in the current age, it's viewed a certain way. Yeah. And I feel like a lot I of mean, people, like Boosie, to them, it's, like what? Like that's my son. That's his regular life, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So you got exposed to some of the finer things of life at an early age. Yeah, definitely, bro. It was wild. My dad was cool. You know what I'm saying? He put me on a lot of game. Mm. What last motherfucker? Why'd you guys stop uh, living together? Uh, he just, you know what I'm saying, just wanted to live. You know what I'm saying? And I had a stepmother that was, you know, she, you know, when I was with my father, you know, he, you know, he was there for me. He he always wants me to be correct and always wants me to do good. You know what I'm saying? My dad always told me, son, I don't give a fuck if you're a failure or you're successful. Just be a good person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it just wasn't really that many rules because he was living. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it sounds like it. So so I'm I'm you know doing what I want to do, 
And then, you know, he knew that my stepmother would be there for me and, you know, be on my bitch ass about it and shit like that. Right. Yeah, I was still fucking up with her, you know what I'm saying? I'm Like, I, you know, I, I feel bad for how I acted, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, my mother lost her job because she was always, you know, lost jobs because she was always having to pick me up from school. You know what I'm saying? I was always getting into fights. I just, I had a lot of hate in me. You know, I feel like the world owed me something. I was just a hothead and shit. Where do you think that anger came from as a young man? Man, I, bro, man, I got, man, my friend, I, just being fucked over as a kid, being having trust issues, you know what I'm saying? Just shit like that. Right. I just, you know. Just mad, my mother being taken away from me. I didn't have my father. When my mother died, I was separated from all my family from my family, you know what I'm saying? Right. It was just wild. So when did rap become part of you? Because you're talking about being really young and having your dad tell you to rap. How at what age were you rapping? Like four. Like four? Yeah. It just made sense to you? You just heard it on the radio and you liked it? My my uncles was doing it. My mm. my tia Sam, she had a boyfriend. She was like a freshman, her boyfriend was like a sophomore. Maybe he was a junior at the time. That's my uncle Mom. And shout out to him, let's kick dope. And uh, mm-hmm. home, my cousin, Homer Pimpson, shout out Pimp, uh, motherfucking uh, my uncle Esco. And it was really me, Homer, Esco, and my uncle Mo, and them three really, and they was doing kick dough. And I, I I was just watching them do it, you know what I'm saying? And they was doing it inside my, my granddaddy's shed, you know, they had the, the microphone and everything, so it's just easy access. Boom, I'm watching them, and I want to be cool like them and want to do it like them. Right. And they just made a f- at them. I don't know how much of my music you checked out. Right. I'm super excited for you to uh, for you to hear like what I got in the future. Uh huh. But I like, bro, I'm a fucking animal. Right. I mean that that is what stood out to me the most from listening to you is like I don't know if I ever heard a Mexican rapper rap like this, and I don't know if I ever heard a rapper from Texas rap like this. And I bet, bro, they've been waiting for something like me, cause. Right. Where so okay that that was that super lyrical fast rap and being willing to get real technical with it was that something that you got put onto that was like the early styles of rap that you paid attention to shit I, yeah I definitely my uncle Esco was doing that shit but I I was like they kind of just introduced me to the music I thought that was cool so they got me into it right you know what I'm saying if there was somebody that I would like cons- like consider like who I wanted to sound like and you know what I'm saying was that guy for me was Big L like I, mm. I was always jamming like a lot of the East Coast. Uh, uh, from Philly to Detroit to New York, like 50, Nas, Big L, and Buster, probably like, you know, that's my shit. You right. know what I'm saying? But that's I'm interesting. From, I'm from Texas, you know what I'm saying? I'm for yeah. L, gonna have a groove in me. It's interesting that you appreciate the classics. How old are you? 23. 23. What the fuck? I'm 38. Yeah, and you make it look good, baby. <laughs> thank you. But Big L, like, I was a Big L fan, and Big L was dead by, what, 96 or something? Like, Chef, yeah, So yeah, you were really you know, digging in the crates there, huh? Yeah, I had a I had just moved to Austin and I had a partner named Furman. This motherfucker like I like we in the seventh grade together and I don't even think we had a eighth grade. I don't even think like he him and his family didn't even have like papers, you know what I'm saying? They fresh from the border and shit like that and right. and you know, he he's li- I'm he's the only one I'm talking to, you know what I'm saying? And uh his name was Furman. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's crazy as fuck, man. I well, I hope if you see this bro, many blessings to you, baby. I hope I hope it's as far as you could throw it. Anyways, uh that motherfucker was jamming him. And he was like, man, let me put you on some cub, ooh, rah, rah, whatever the fuck he said. And I put them headphones in and, bro, it fucked me up. I, yeah, it fucked me up. And I was already jamming Hobson. Hobson was another one oh, that, really? I was wow. jamming, that was fucking it up. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you were just always drawn to the lyrical shit because it feels yeah. like a lot of young kids are just drawn to, like, whatever's popping at that time. Or they want to hear, like, little kid versions of grown-up rappers. Yeah. They want to hear, like, some 14-year-old kid talking about shooting up the block or whatever. And a lot of times, so it's, it's kind of surprising just hearing somebody who is, like, a fan of classic hip-hop Man, at I a young love age. music. I, it's more than rap. Yeah. More I, got, I got country music that I'm finna be dropping. I got rock music I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Really? Hell yeah. That's dope. It's just, I love music. I, I thank God every single morning that I got music because, like, Man, bro, I know I'm not getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work. I, I know I'm not finna be sweeping up broom. I know I'm not. I I can't cook. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm useless as fuck. But when it comes to this music, bro, that's all I know. And it, it's a blessing for me. You know what I'm saying? And I've been busting my bitch ass off, and it works for me. That's why I would never want to disrespect it. Right. You know, that's why I go hard. Right. So you were rapping all through high school. But, like, what? when did you start to kind of take it serious? Like, at what point did you start putting videos on shit? Like a year and a half ago. Oh, so you waited that long? Yeah. Why did you decide to wait that long? If you've been doing it forever, did you feel like you were just still like getting your shit together in terms of? Nah, I just that's shit. That's when it was time. I don't know. I just started doing it then. Right. Definitely. Like I was always in trouble too. I was always in trouble as a kid. 
So I never, I was never really able to to focus uh, on it. I mean, I feel like you know, some busy being a kid type shit. So mm. you, know you know what I'm saying? saying? Like I, I was trying to figure shit out still. You know what I'm saying? Because like I had a lot of problems with my family. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, just having that issue. You know what I'm talking about? You finished high school? Shit, hell yeah. You did? Hell yeah, That's I did. Dope. I did, thank God, bro. I almost didn't, but I did. You know what I'm saying? Shit, hard work. You know what I'm saying? God and just the people that I had around me. Did you get in a lot of trouble in in high school? Or? Yeah, I did, bro. But you know what I'm saying? It was all just over like fighting shit. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So, okay, you start putting music out, and does it start to go viral right away, or like at what point does it start to go viral? I think like 2018, I dropped my first music video, and the only reason why I dropped that is because here, like this whole cut my fault, man. Only reason why I, uh, I dropped this one because I had just got back from Austin. Cause I was living in Austin for a little bit, uh -huh. and then uh, I moved back down to the country, and I, and I was in a dub, West Columbia. I was with my grandparents and them, and uh, shit, I was just rapping. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what I was doing. Like I just was rapping. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and you know my uncle Mona and them, they still got the, the studio set up, so I'm, pff, I'm right back <coughs> in that hub. Boom. You know I'm making music. My cousin DJ was like, you know, he got a homeboy, and he was like, hey, you know, I want to show him your. Uh, just music, you know, he showed it and he was like, Boy, you gotta let me jump on this hole. I gotta gotta jump on it. Plan C. It was called Plan C. I said, Okay, we'll drop it. Uh, well, I said, well, well, you could record it. So he recorded to it. He was like, Bro, we gotta do a video, gotta do it. You know, me, I'm I'm high as fuck, like fuck it. I ain't got nothing else to do. Uh -huh. So we did it. Dropped it. it like in a month, I think it was like at forty five K and got stuck. Right. But and, I, and no promo, no, we just country kids, just dropped the video. Right. So you just kept going with it? Kind of, and it, and it just blew up on its own. Or like, how did you get eyeballs on it? I just fucking we just dropped it, right? And and people just started to gravitate towards it, or what? Yeah, yeah. Because I've that. always been a cool motherfucker, so everywhere I go, everybody already know me, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of you know, kind of already had a fan base. It feels like super lyrical hip hop. It has like a real consistent fan base on YouTube. People like you know you mentioned Hobson. Or I even think of somebody like Dax. It's like, you know, this, this he's is, not. He really not my cup of lean on the cool. You know what I'm saying? Like he Dax. Do, yeah, he do what he do, bro. <laughs> right. He, he it's just you know, there's you gotta have the full package. You gotta have the voice. You gotta right. have everything. His voice is really not there for me. Yeah, that's but, fair. But he's still fire. But though. Some, somebody like Logic, you know, has like kind of took that to an extreme of just being this like you know since like he just has this like diehard fan base that just loves the super lyrical shit. Like I just feel like there's always gonna kind of be a market for that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right. But so it's interesting because you have a lot of different influences, though, too, because I'm listening to your shit and some of it's like chopped and screwed. Fucking you, you definitely experiment a lot. From like this is good. Yeah. That's why. No, no, it's just cool to see you have that influence as well, because like I feel like, you and know, I got it everywhere, bro. I'm dropping shit. I'm speaking like DMX on one of them. Really? Because yeah, some people were like everything. if you if they like fucking Mob Deep or 50 Cent or whatever you're saying that they wouldn't necessarily gravitate towards the other shit as well. Yeah. Although, like, you know, I'm interviewing Paul Wall, and he's doing all this, like, hip-hop-ass shit these days, you know? Like, it is kind of just other sides of the same coin. Yeah. Definitely. Man, that's cool as fuck that I'm here. Thank you again for having me, bro. <laughs> no, my pleasure, man. Yeah. So, uh, okay, do you go out of your way, do you, like, to portray the fact that you have respect for your Texas roots? Because I see you got the boots on, you got the hat. I mean, this, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but this is comfortable. This is what I look good in. Mm. This is me. You know what I'm saying? This is what I feel comfortable in. Really? It is comfortable. Because I feel like the hat doesn't seem that comfortable to me. I'm going to be honest. Really? Well, it's not like I've really spent much time wearing <laughs> one, but... You should try it, Adam. I thought about it before. I thought about buying a full cowboy outfit one time when I was in Vegas for this poker tournament, and then I just couldn't picture myself sitting there for 10 hours wearing that. I think you the look boots, mighty fine in the it. boots. I don't know, man. Bro, look right at these. Here, Although, to be honest, like my fucking footwear does look pretty pathetic compared to yours. Your shit is masculine as fuck. This is beta as fuck. Nah, nah. You make it look right, cuz. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's like acceptable, but it's definitely not a cowboy boot. Cowboy boot is a statement. What's a go to shoe for you? Honestly, these or just like, you know, some dunks, some fucking man, be basic ass shoes. I ain't even gonna hold you. Yeah? Yes. You're barefoot when you're home a lot? Yeah. What, what kind of, do you live on like a farm? Where you, a lot of, <laughs> nah. Like where do you live I, I want to soon, but really? nah. I just, I like it where I'm at because it's chill, it's sweet. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just be chilling, minding their business. I don't like the city. 
Really? Yeah. You don't like you like being like really out in the nature? Yeah. Okay. See, I can't really get into that. I get anxiety when like, I'm away like, from the city. Talking about, like talking about take the food and let it go get the meal. Right. I don't know, man. I like to be in the middle of some shit. I dig it, bro. Everybody got their own <laughs> cup of lean. <laughs> How many cups of lean do you have? Is that a big part of your life? Mm, it was. It was for a period of time and you kind of got past it or what? No, I still want to, bro. It's just like, man, that shit, you know what I'm saying? Fake shit these days, bullshit. They got shit in Texas called Almost. What's that? <laughs> I fucking so almost. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was about like, yeah. So everybody getting served fake lean out there now? I'm not going to say that. I would never want to say that. What's up with, like, the cartel lean? I heard that that shit's out there. I don't know. I don't want to speak on it. <laughs> There's not some fucking Mexican lean that they're synthesizing down there? Shit. It seems like a great idea. Bro, I'm sure. Who knows, man? There's so much going on. Because lean prices are so high that it's like if you could make good fake, you know, fake lean or whatever, I mean, it seems like a huge market that I'm surprised. I feel, but that's equivalent to like, I feel like that's taking a press pill. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And I ain't, I'm not no gremlin. A lot of people are taking <laughs> press pills. <laughs> yeah, nah, y'all are animals. Do what you do, baby. And a lot if of press pills are fine. If you like it, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of them, like if you buy drugs off the dark web and shit, mm. it's, re it's real drugs, but it's Press, somebody yeah. made it in a fucking factory in China or whatever. Yeah, when you fucking won't. Listen, not I, I, don't do, I don't do any of it. <laughs> yeah, so right. I'm glad I'm not fucking rolling the dice. Yeah, nah, I dig it. That shit. It's just insane that people really do it. Yeah. It's crazy shit. Shout out to y'all. It is crazy because when I used to be taking pills all the time, we weren't even thinking about fentanyl. Like what? And then Lil Peep died. And then we realized, like, oh, shit, you can get fake pills that kill you? Yeah. That's when we realized. I just saw, wasn't it recent that, like, his his It was just the uh, five-year anniversary of his death, yeah. I just I saw it on Instagram. Because that shit was, like, you couldn't you couldn't hide it. You couldn't deny it. He posted a fucking Instagram photo of him with the Xanax on his tongue. Jesus. Yeah, it was intense. Yeah, yeah. No. Rest in peace, man. Sad Rest shit. Peace. Killed a lot of people, you know? Yeah, that was the, uh, where I'm at for a little bit. You know, it was going down. People was getting fucking knocked off by that shit. Yeah, hitting yeah. on the perks. Yep, definitely. So, um, okay, now like your music starts going viral on its own. How you start advancing your career from there? Like, like what? What's the mentality? Shit, consistency. Mm. You just kept dropping over and over and just trying to outdo yourself. Yeah. And while I was doing that, I had a, a boy named Greg, and he was, you know, on the other side, you know, trying to help push my name out there, just shout me out a little bit to the, his connects. And then I met a dude named Ghetto and Hip Hop Live Show. Hip Hop Live Show was a, it's probably, I think it, Hip Hop yeah. Live Show was the first, uh, like, you know, podcast and things to, like, believe in me and, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, this is that Mexican OT. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. This is the the dude I seen interviewing you. Yeah, my boy Ghetto. Okay. Yeah, shout out Ant and Diva for sure. Okay, I was watching some of those clips when I was trying to figure out the root of this uh, peso peso thing. Yeah, nah, I mean shit. There was. Uh, you guys are on tour together now, apparently. Yeah. So that that's dope to see that that got patched up because I've been homies with him since he first came out. It was really never nothing there. Like yeah. at the, you know what I'm saying? Like at the time, bro. That's just how I was feeling. Like, I mean, fuck, if you're fucking rapping, you should feel like nobody should beat you either. I obviously called that motherfucker's name out for a reason. He was he's the best. He was the best at the time. But it's interesting because from a hip-hop perspective, if you were a fan of hip-hop throughout like the early 2000s and shit, the mixtape era, it was super normal to hop on somebody's beat. Lil Wayne hopped on everybody's fucking beat in the entire rap game, and nobody took it as a diss. Yeah. It was always just some hip-hop competitive shit. Yeah. That doesn't really happen that much, and when people but do that, it, a lot of times people catch feelings about it now. That's because I'm in it to fucking win it. Mm. I love this shit. Yeah, these days, man, people take shit. Different, you know, what I'm saying? they take shit different ways. Now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that was the perfect song to set off a little mini beef, though, because <laughs> it is the hardest essay ever. It's like a song yeah. about being the best Mexican want... rapper from Texas or whatever. You right. know, I don't even want to be the hardest essay ever. That's peso, like peso is the hardest essay ever. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm that, I'm that Mexican OT. Right. I mean, you guys are definitely totally different style wise. Yeah, yeah. Also that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely. But we do we do got a song that actually dropped. What's today, Friday? Yeah, it drops tonight. Man, today's Thursday. It drops tonight at 12. Okay, but so in L.A., there's definitely a lot of Mexican rappers who I think that they kind of have like a purely Mexican fan base to a certain extent. You know, like that's just like the vast majority of their fan base. Do you feel like you have that kind of fan base? Do you feel like you just have a more overall fan base? I got them all. Really? I got everybody. I got white, black, Mexican, polka dot, <laughs> all of them. 
That's dope. I got all of them, and they all love me. I'm a good person. You know what I'm saying? I show nothing but love and respect, and you know what I'm saying? Shit, that gets me far. Right. You know, a lot of people respect that. Not only that, like I said, I'm just a cool motherfucker. I don't fake the funk. Right. I'm Virgil. Definitely. So, wait, just to finish this other conversation, what, what was this? What had to happen specifically for you and Peso Peso to become cool after it was a little tense for a minute there? Was there anyone mutual connect who kind of helped smooth it over or anything? No. Just straight up, just men talk. You guys just finally chopped it up? Yeah, we was at a show and finally caught each other. And uh, I mean, shit, you know what I'm saying? Fuck, you feel me knocking? You gonna let me in? <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I'm like it gets, I put it in the motherfucker face. Right. You know what I'm saying? But he, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't even swing down. Like he, it, even it wasn't beef. But even if it was supposed to, he didn't swing down. Like he just straight up was like, I respect it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't call me harder or didn't dick ride me or nothing. He just like, I respect it. I love your hustle. You know what I'm saying? I think we could do a lot. To, you know, I mean, fuck, you know, he he was really on a business standpoint, you know, like everybody everybody in Texas want to see us together. Right, exactly, yeah. You guys could definitely do a lot more for each other working together than you could beef, you know? know? Yeah, I'm already knowing it. And I, ain't got, I don't want to beef with nobody. Right. I ain't got, you know, I want to have friends everywhere. Doesn't really get you anywhere in the long run. I want to be your friend, Adam. That's what I'm saying. If we beef, like, what the fuck? I mean. Shit, don't. It could get us a little short-term attention, but ultimately it's just kind of stupid. I, I take pride in not arguing with my boys. Right. Well, I mean, but arguing with your boys, like, I actually kind of take pride in arguing with yeah. them, too. Because if I have an issue with one of my boys, I want to be able to just bring it up. Let's nah, get to I it. Talk shit. You know, like, let's, let's just air this shit out as soon as possible if I got any kind of issue with you, you know? Yeah, nah. But, I mean, shit, we really don't know. Nah. I mean, we we argue, but I mean, it's just it's, it's, it's little boys, shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's love, but like, as far as I'm just like arguing, like he's saying, like, nah, it ain't finna be none of that bitch shit. The boys be having going on these days. People be arguing and shit like females these days. That shit, right? Getting into beef, like you said. I mean, I don't know for sure. So, have you toured much outside of Texas, or is it primarily just up in there? No, nah, it's like its own world, right? I went on tour with OGZ. Oh, nice. Uh, we went to, hey, man, shout out old Jeezy. Shout out old Jeezy. Oh, uh, Rory, all them boys, you know what I'm saying? Them boys, hey, I fuck with cuz, really, you know what I'm saying? Like, watching them, watching them maneuver, you know, through everything, and seeing the shows that he's showing, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? That motherfucker has some full houses, bro. Right. He the shit. What stood out to you about the difference between a uh, L.A. guy and a Texas guy, though? Anything stand out? Shit, everything. It's completely different. It's apples and oranges. Really? Different slang, everything, attitude, everything. Y'all call them lolos, we call them slabs. Lolos? Oh well, like a car. Yeah. <laughs> y'all say gang. Y'all say y'all. I mean, we say y'all. Y'all say you guys. Yeah. We be like, what my thugs or like my boys? They I be like the gang, the homies. The homies. The homies. The homies. Yeah, That's what Juno what says. Yeah, yeah. Homies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all talk like this. <laughs> For real. Some of us, maybe. <laughs> Not me. I don't know. Like, the gangsters, like, when I be seeing them in their music videos and shit, that, I mean, shit, it look good. They doing it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, y'all. It's everything is so different. Right. Definitely. But you, it's shit. But that's, you know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why they stand out. That's why we stand out. But do you like to make your music sound very Texas, or do you like to make shit that could maybe have a wider appeal? What's your attitude on that? Man, bro, that's why I'm telling you I'm excited for you to hear my new shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, shit, it's more than rap. Like I said, it's I do everything. Right. I just need a tempo, and I'm going. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Who, who, oh, so, okay, what's your relationship with SPM? You know what I'm saying? He cool good people, you know what I'm saying? I chop it up with him. On the him. phone? Yeah. Really? How'd you get put in touch with him? Because he's in prison for, shit, you know, it's not. I guess in, somebody in just saw my music. Somebody called me was like, hey, I got SPM on the phone. He want to talk to you. And I was like, huh? All right. And he was just. Being encouraging about the music, or what he was, was like, he saying? Bro, you're fucking insane. You know what I'm saying? I, I fuck with you. Uh, you know, he started just telling me about how you know his game plan and just giving me good words and shit. But mostly calling me to tell me like I fuck with you. I want to do shit with you. I, you know, right? Because he's gonna be out potentially. Well, he's up for parole. I think like next year, right? Yeah. So you think that that's gonna change? Do you think he's gonna have a big career when he comes out, or do you think that the, the people have moved on? 
Hey, I hear that people like still listen to him yeah, a lot yeah, in bro. Texas and shit. Fuck yeah, bro. It's SPM. Right. Hey, bro, Not you ain't gotta leave, you ain't gotta leave Texas to to be to have a fat ass fan base. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shit, that that motherfucker right there make a living off Texas itself. For real. Solid, bro. From 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 love it to fucking you know what I'm saying down there. When he gets out, that's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be wild to see what that's like. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I, uh, you know, what I'm saying I know he's working on music. Yeah, I think I think he'll have a good career when he comes home. Really? Yeah. This the, the you know, fan base. Whatever. Big there's many blessings to him. Oh, okay. So yeah, you said that you were uh, making country music. Like, yeah. Like, how do you go about that process, and how do you decide like how hip hop you want to keep it versus how country you want to make it? It's like a lot of different ways you could approach it. Yeah, uh, I'm sure eventually it would be crazy to make a full on country song, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sure I've tried it, but uh, I try to I try to keep, you know what I'm saying, like 808s and that bitch and shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. There's a lot of people who kind of like transition from just rapping to doing the country shit at a certain point, like fucking Jelly Roll and all yeah. these different people who are able to find like a totally different arc in their career. Yeah, but I but like I said I do more than country too. Like I do I you know what I'm saying? I come at you with rock. I come at you with jazz, you know. The one that I'm talking about right now, it was a country song. Got kind of got, got the the beat remade. My boy Oliver and uh Hollow um who could was you, over there Could with you Johnny. play the acoustic guitar? No. Uh, no. You should learn. And yeah. then during your sets, have this like weird moment where it gets dark and there's just a light on you and you're playing the guitar and, and doing some Carito shit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be lit. Yeah. <laughs> Performing with a mariachi band. Could, well, I mean, hey, that's your decision, but that could take you to a whole different level. Yeah, it was already part of the game plan. Mm, just fully embrace that shit as hard as you can. Kind of, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit, fuck it. That, like, my, my people, I mean, I, I care for it, you know what I'm saying? It's a part of me and shit, you know, but my people, they love that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm here to to give them what they want. Right. I don't know if you heard about this, but there was a whole thing where there's this this L.A. rapper, uh, Swifty Blue, who was basically saying that he wouldn't sign with a black label because he feels like he wants to stick with his own race. How do you feel about that opinion? I understand where he's coming from, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying I agree with it or nothing, you know? I mean, shit, look at this fuckhead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I got I got love everywhere. But you don't view the world so much based on race? Like, that doesn't really matter to you? You you would sign with a black rapper or a black label? Yeah, hell yeah. Like, I, man, bro, shit, I go wherever it's best for me, and, and it's going to get me the furthest. Right. I don't give a fuck about none of that other shit. Definitely. It, but Swift, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I don't know, bro. That motherfucker been on you know, some shit lately. You tapping in with him out here? Uh, I, I was at I was at my my boy Zay. He had me at uh at Nipsey's studio. Oh really? And I had saw him there, and uh, I guess he was there working on music, and he showed me something, and I punched in with him. But I did a song with him. But oh nice. I did it, you know what I'm saying? Just to you know. From a cat, I did it for Texas and Cali thing, you know. Right. Just to show that it's cool like that. Also, YBE has another Cali Mexican. I did a song with and shit. He cooled in a bitch. Right. Uh, he hit me up, and uh, you know we got shit cracking from there. It was shit. It was all love, all fun and shit. You know. Yeah. Shout out YBE. Definitely shout Both out YBE. Out here showed a lot of love. How do you feel about uh, the the reputation, perhaps, that, like, Houston or Texas in general might be getting? Because, you know, you saw a bunch of people saying that, like, don't go to Houston, et cetera, after takeoff got killed there. Do you think that's crazy, or is that, like, is there a little bit of truth to that? I mean, fuck, you know what I'm saying? It, that's everyday shit. The only reason why it's on the news is because it's him. It's because it's takeoff. Right. Same shit happens down here, I mean. This is true. It's everywhere. Plenty you know? of rappers from all over the world got killed in LA. Hmm? Like plenty of rappers, like P and B Rock or or uh, Pop Smoke. Yep. They come to LA and they get killed, and nobody holds it against LA, right? Well, I guess they do, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Pop Smoke got killed in LA. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. In his Airbnb. You shitting me? Yeah. Some young gang members ran up in his Airbnb and rest in peace. I thought it was yeah. in New York. Damn. Yeah. Rest in peace. It's crazy. Yeah. Definitely. Who would be like your dream collabs artist to work with? Megan. Really? Yeah. That big a fan. Interesting. Megan or Chris Brown. 
Breezy, my boy Breezy, holla at me, throw it. Right. I fuck with Breezy. Damn. So is Meg uh, inspirational, though? Just because she kind of came up out of Texas in the last few years and shit? Nah, man, just like, shit, she just, I mean, yeah, cool, she came out of Texas, definitely. But she just fucking do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, at first, when I first heard her, I wasn't, I wasn't used to women talking like that. So it fucked me up. Yeah? You know what I'm saying? You're into it now, though? Yeah, the way, man, she get them girls lit. <laughs> hey. <laughs> she, sure. That's what I'm saying, bro. She do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's me. Yeah. So. Definitely. Um, okay, but so what are your thoughts on checking in in general? Like, do you feel like that is do people gotta check in when they go to Texas? Maybe, well, <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> go to Austin, it's beautiful over there. Right. Go to love it. Go to like you know, go to like, you know what I'm saying, where you see some mountains, but go to go to the countryside. You know what I'm saying? I guess it matters how outside you want to be, you know? Yeah. Because if I go to Texas, I'm not even thinking about it. I was just in Texas for a wedding. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I didn't even it. think about it. That was great, yeah. yeah. It never occurred to me that I would need any kind of protection or anything. Nah, you know? nah bro. Everybody, I'm kind of like a more of a normal guy in comparison, yeah, I think. Yeah, Texas got love, bro. Yeah. It's cool like that. Definitely. Like he said, the, man, don't get it twisted up there. All no parts. shoes on. Yeah, don't get it twisted up there. All parts, you know what I'm saying, where like people, people are just fucking... Just on some other shit, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you'll know. Bro, right. that's that. Like, don't go there. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so what what else you got coming up? Anything uh big on the way? Yeah, like I said, I got that song with uh Peso dropping tonight or Friday. Oh, dropping nice. at midnight. I got uh the rest of this tour coming up. <clears throat> what else is it on high? Another album at the, at the beginning of the year. Oh yeah, I got an album coming at the well. Early, early next year. We'll say early next year. Right. You know what I'm saying? Working on a lot of shit, really just, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, just if, if it, you know, just consistency, the same game plan since then, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just really just working on music, staying on top of shit, you know, videos, uh, letting, letting my label and everybody know that I'm fucking with, you know, that way they can get shit prepared and shit. We just, you know, you ever watch the Power Rangers? Oh, yeah. You remember, you remember, you, like where one of them was the leg and the other one was the arm. Oh, no, they would come together. You yeah, know, like that's form. how we are. We just fucking boom, 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 knock one out and just work. Right. So that's it's really what I'm doing right now. Just, just strictly music, focusing on that. I having, like when the having, having fun with it, enjoying my career. I like when the Power Rangers would fight those putties, like gray dudes. There was just like a million of them. Mm. And they just beat the shit out of them, and they just I don't know, they just like disappeared. Yeah, I dig it. Those are good old days. Um, all right, yeah, my man. Keep going. Keep going for sure. The yeah. music's crazy. Just keep pushing. You're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna be big. I yeah, can feel hey, it. Yeah. I work hard, man. Like I said, my people around me shit, you know, everybody know their position and they understand that it's important. Right. Definitely. How'd you come up with using that as your name? What, that mission O T? Yeah. It was really just O T. It was uh it was really on the O T V, on the Verge. You know, my name is Virgil. People call me Verge. And I was I was a kid and I was rapping. And I said something, 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 even though I'm on the verge. And, they were, you know, my boy was like, oh, I fuck with that. Like, how you did that on the verge? Your name is Virgil. Uh -huh. And I played it off like, oh, yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was OTV. And then, you know what I'm saying, I, I was fucking around with some people, and he was just like, OTV too long. I'm just going to call you OT. And uh, so that just it just kind of got stuck like that for a little bit. I said it in that, that Plan C song. I said, hey, I was at that Mexican OT, and I was just saying that just to be doing, you know, I'm high as fuck at this time. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it just kind of stuck, that Mexican out of Texas. Like, out of Texas was just a perfect fit for it. Out of town? Hey, out of Texas. Yeah, but I mean, just like in general, OT has always kind of been like, oh, he's OT, like out of town. Oh, okay, yeah. Specifically, like, selling drugs pretty much, I would think. I dig it. <laughs> you ever met OT Genesis? No, nah, I haven't, but I, I That fuck would be with an epic music. photo. I fuck with his, yeah, he cool. Just two different OTs. Yeah, right. I can make it happen. No shit. Oh yeah. Shout out to him. I'll send you right to the crib. Right on. <laughs> OT, we gotta meet. We gotta meet the other OT. <laughs> Mr. Show. All right. Appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, definitely, bro. No doubt. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support.